Hello friend! Welcome to Zuzucorn's Expert Archer Guided Playthrough, where I'll cover the easiest way for you to progress through an expert world using nothing but arrow firing weapons. I'm Zuzucorn and I aim to entertain, encourage, and offer you a place to call home. So subscribe now and join the Zuzucorn family. Let's begin. As a disclaimer here, I'll be using a journey world because it's so much easier to make videos with, but if you didn't know this, you can turn up the difficulty in the settings right here. 2.0 means expert difficulty, so you get the full expert experience with all the increased pain and bonus drops. I also won't start off by using any of the freebies like the Finch Staff or the Fletchling Wings, so let's begin. Welcome to the world of Terraria. To start off, you'll want to cut down some trees and build a house so that NPCs can move in. If you're totally new, you can use an axe to cut down the trees and you should be given one when you just log in. Unlike Minecraft, hitting the base of a tree will cause the entire tree to implode instantly with all the wood it's supposed to drop. So use this wood to build a workbench and place it down. Standing near the workbench will allow you to craft a whole bunch of things, so press the escape key and click on this crafting button here and it will tell you what you can craft right now. For your house, you need a table, a chair and a light source. It also has to be fully walled, so make a whole bunch of wood walls at your workbench and fill it in. On PC, you can also turn the smart cursor on just by pressing the control key once. This brings up a yellow box that will systematically fill in the walls for you, so you don't miss any. It's also just much easier in general. Turn it off by pressing control key again once you're done. It's a really neat little toggle tool. Luckily for us archers, we have an archer weapon right away. Use your wood to make a wooden bow. They're pretty cheap, so you can craft a few until you get one with a good modifier, which is a prefix that gives you some bonus stats on the weapon. Once you're done with that, just dig downwards a little and grab some stone blocks, then craft a bunch of wooden arrows using wood and stone. They are quite cheap to make, so you can afford to just make a whole big bunch of them. Make some wood armor if you can, even though the defense it offers is low. Defense is really important in Expert because of how enemies hit so much harder. If there is a desert nearby, you can also opt for cactus armor instead, which is just ever so slightly better. Now, as an archer, you'll be opting to use arrows as your basic ammo. One important thing to understand about arrows is that most of them are affected by gravity. This means that when you shoot from a bow, the arrows will arc most of the time, so you have to compensate for this when you aim. Later on, there will be some bows and arrows with different speeds, with some of them unaffected by gravity, so you need to stay flexible and adapt to the different loadouts. Don't worry so much though, especially if you have trouble in the beginning. Practice makes perfect. Fortunately, archers can attack from range, which makes you a lot safer than some of the other classes. At the very beginning of the game, the goal is to explore the world and get a bunch of loot. Importantly, you'll want to fare a pair of Hermes boots, which lets you run faster, and a double jump accessory like a cloud or blizzard in a bottle. That will help for the first boss that we will tackle in our progression. As you explore, try to look for the ice biome. That's also where we'll get our first arrow upgrade. To do this, mine up a whole bunch of ice blocks. By now, you have probably figured out how to make a bunch of torches using gel and wood. If you don't know where to get gel, you can get some from the slimes that randomly spawn throughout the day. With some ice blocks in your possession, you can combine those with normal torches to make ice torches. Combining these with normal wooden arrows make frostburn arrows. These are great for the early game because they do pretty high damage and inflict the frostburn debuff, which most enemies in the game are vulnerable against. The Frostburn debuff also doesn't extinguish in water, which gives it an edge over the normal flaming arrows. Not to mention, these arrows are also much faster than wooden ones, so it's a lot easier to aim with these. On your journey, if you ever come across fallen stars, make sure to pick those up too. Those can be used to make a different type of arrow that pierces enemies, and we'll need a bunch of those for a boss later. So accumulate fallen stars whenever you can. Next, go spelunking and mine up a whole bunch of ore and gems. In particular, go for gold or platinum, and make sure you get a bunch of topaz gems. We'll need those for later. So just mine up everything you can see. If you ever come across any chests while exploring, do know that these are completely free for you to loot, so just take everything you can. 
Having said all that though, the world is filled with traps like falling boulders or dart traps, so just be a little more careful. If you do see one of these detonators, they're usually connected to a bunch of dynamite. Manually detonate them from a distance to reap the valuable ore reward. When you return from your spelunking session, feel free to use the guide's crafting function to see what you can make with your loot. By using this function, he'll tell you what you need to make those things along with what crafting station you need, so explore to your heart's content. Back to progression though, make a furnace with 50 stone, some wood, and a torch, then smelt all your ores into bars. Using iron or lead bars, make a basic anvil, which allows you to craft with metals when you're nearby. I don't have enough right now, but try to make a gold bowl and a gold pickaxe. If you can afford it, make some gold or silver armor as well. But don't sweat it if you don't have enough. There is an alternative specialized archer armor that I'll show you. This randomly happened to me, but if you happen to see a gnome somewhere, try to lead it to the surface. In natural light, it will petrify into a statue, which you can place down to boost your luck. Luck is a pretty complicated topic, but it suffices to say that you want as much luck as you can when farming loot drops or when fighting bosses. For now, I'll continue to explore the world and get more ores and loot. If you come across clay, which is usually found slightly below the surface, grab a whole bunch of that too. We'll need to get an herb farm going as soon as possible so that we have access to potions, which are pretty impactful and useful when you're tackling expert mode. Once again, don't forget to collect fallen stars. I've managed to find a pair of Hermes boots here, so that's one of the two things down. Now all I need is a double jump. If you do have the chance, farm some flying eyeballs at night to get a few lenses, which are a monster drop. These can be used to summon our first boss, so there's no harm accumulating some. You can also practice your archery while you're at it, since the eyeballs may be a bit tricky to shoot down. If you have the time, build a few more rooms for more NPCs too. We will eventually move them somewhere else, but it's a good idea to just get them in first, hence the expanded rooms. If you are up for the challenge, venture into the underground desert to mine up a whole bunch of desert fossils. These will be used to make our very first specialized archer armor. As I mentioned, you can do fine with metal ore armor, but that would be quite the grind considering how expensive it is. Desert fossils on the other hand are easier to acquire, but they contain a lot more risk since the underground desert is a dangerous and stressful place. You need to be really patient and careful not to get run over by rolling cacti or swarmed by ant lions. It is safer to barricade yourself and mine through it slowly, room by room. But if you do choose this route, you'll be handsomely rewarded since the desert is usually filled with loot. Eventually, the merchant will also move in. It will be wise to buy a piggy bank from him, which is a storage that you can place down. The great thing about piggy banks is that you can store money in here, and when you buy stuff from shops, you can automatically tap into the savings there. This is much better than carrying around your money, since dying in expert mode causes you to drop a pretty large percentage of your gold. Sure, you can get it back, but using piggy banks are just so much more hassle-free. If you happen to find any herb bags, open those up and save all the herbs and seeds you get. With the clay that we gathered up earlier, craft a bunch of clay pots at the furnace. These pots allow you to grow and propagate herbs, so plant all the seeds you can so you can get started on multiplying them. Also, buy a bug net from the merchant. Occasionally, you'll find gold critters, which you can catch using one of these. These are worth a buttload of gold, which really help you out, so sell them and save the money in your piggy bank. In my playthrough, a goblin army spawned naturally, which is an invasion type event. This means that a whole bunch of enemies will swarm the world spawn, and the event only ends after you've defeated a whole bunch of them. You might die quite a few times, but it's a great thing to happen because you can get loot, money, and clearing it unlocks a new NPC who is pretty important. So this is where those fallen stars will come in handy. Combining fallen stars with wooden arrows gives you just the arrows, an infinitely piercing arrow that is unaffected by gravity. This is super useful for the invasion thanks to the piercing effect, allowing you to melt through all the enemies if they are nicely lined up. If you are not too picky and strict about your class restrictions, you can just use the spiky balls they drop against them. That makes quick and easy work of the invasion as well. Now that we're done with the invasion, let us continue on with our journey. 
A little bonus tip here. If you have a surplus of jester arrows, you can use them to check for spaces in the walls. The light from a jester arrow is more than enough to let you see through the walls, so you can use them to look for loot or to determine which direction to go. Also, don't forget to look for life crystals. Consuming them gives you increased max health, which is really important. Try to get your health to the current cap of 400 if you can. And with this, we should be almost ready for our first boss. If you want to, you can also start building some houses in some other biomes. Having happy NPCs in other biomes lets you purchase a pylon specific to that biome, which allows you to teleport between them easily. When you've got a certain amount of HP, there is a chance that the Eye of Cthulhu, our very first boss, will naturally spawn. You get a message saying that you feel an evil presence watching you. Don't worry too much about it if you're not prepared, cause if you're underground, the eye won't spawn. So just chill and continue spelunking. But if you are ready to tackle this challenge, return home and face the boss. To easily defeat the Eye of Cthulhu, you will want to have a pair of speed boots like the Hermes boots and a double jump. At this point of the playthrough, I still haven't gotten a double jump yet, but it's still okay. It would be wise to have a nice long row of platforms as an arena to help you navigate the boss fight, but once again I was caught pretty off guard, so I didn't have one. But at the very least, make sure you have a nice long flat road to run on. So use your potions if you found some, especially things like regeneration, swiftness and iron skin potions. Also don't forget that you can press the H key to drink health potions that you found as well. For this fight, just keep running and shooting your frostburn arrows at the boss. If you want, jester arrows are also really good as those deal with the tiny eyes that spawns thanks to its piercing property. Personally, I do prefer the frostburn arrows not only because of the burn over time, but also because it makes the eye so much easier to see and dodge. After dealing some damage, the eye will go into phase 2. Get rid of the small ones that spawn, then make sure you have a nice long strip of road to run when it starts to dash. In expert mode difficulty, the eye will continually dash at you. It does look intimidating with nightmarish sound effects, but you really only need to keep running. That's why the speed boots are absolutely essential. It might take you a couple of tries to deal with it, but just do your best. If you want to manually summon the eye again, bring some lenses from the demon eyes to an evil biome altar and make the summoning totem there. Killing the Eye of Cthulhu over and over again is also a great tactic to farm some money and loot. So, once the Eye is defeated, claim your spoils of war and celebrate! The expert exclusive Shield of Cthulhu is really important here, cause it gives you the dash ability, which is a real game changer. You'll need it to avoid all the new expert mode attacks, so practice using it if you can. So for now, I think we've managed to settle lots of things today, so just take it easy, take a break and go at your own pace. Feel free to explore all you want, we'll continue our ranger progression in the next video. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more Terraria and other stuff. This has been Zuzu Korn. have a nice day and have a great week ahead, bye bye!